Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to be working up a child size of the adorable little Lori poncho. This size that I have here is the toddler size and it is completed. I'm going to meet with my model this weekend to get pictures of this. This free pattern is going to be on hearthookhome.com available in toddler size, child size, and teenage size which would work for a petite adult woman as well. So for there is a size chart available on here. The width is going to be wrist to wrist, not including the cuffs. And then the length is going to be from the shoulder to the bottom, and not including fringe if you decide to add it. So this pattern is super fun. It's actually really easy. We, I did do a video tutorial for this stitch itself, but it's really just double crochets and slip stitches. There are a few things that make this stitch easier to do. Um, so you might wanna watch that video tutorial specifically for the double crochet rib stitch, but it's actually very fun, very easy, and very quick to work up once you get your handle on, you know, how to insert your hook on those slip stitch rows. So let's get started with all of our pertinent information. This pattern can be made with a lot of different yarn weights. For this one, I'm using Brava Sport Weight yarn. For the gray one that I showed earlier, I used Brava Worsted Weight. Because of that, you definitely want to make sure that you check your gauge per what is listed in the pattern. In the pattern, it states that we need to have 13 stitches by 12 rows in four inches to make sure that your poncho comes out the correct size. I went ahead and did a gauge swatch using what I thought would work, which is the seven millimeter hook. And when I went and checked my width of my stitches, they were just a little bit too big. So let's count these real quick. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we've got just shy over 12, and I really need to have those 13. That means that my stitches are too big, so I needed to go down a hook size. So I went from my seven millimeter down to a six and a half millimeter, which is this beautiful hook right here. It's a clover hook. Absolutely love these. Hard to read, but very, very good to use. So I tried this with a six and a half millimeter. Let's go ahead and recheck this gauge together. You're just going to line it up on the left side with one of your stitches, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen stitches, which is absolutely beautiful. And we want to make sure that we have. 12 rows. So I'm going to turn it sideways. And this is the bottom of my double crochet row here. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 in 4 inches because these are all of your slip stitch rows. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have 13 stitches, 12 rows. We are perfect to get going on this child size of the Lori Poncho. I'm going to start with a chain of 22 for the child size. Keep in mind that there is a toddler size, a child size, and a teen size, and there are two adult sizes as, as well. There's a one size fits most adult, and then there is a larger size that goes up to 5XL. So there are five different sizes total of this pattern. The two adult sizes are slightly different than what's in the child size here, just because we're taller and I wanted it to shape a little bit differently, um, but, Make sure that you're following along with the pattern size that you are making. So you can either do a foundation double crochet or you can do your chain as I am doing here and make your way back through. So here I have 22 chains. I'm going to do a double crochet in the third chain from my hook and I like to go into the back bar right here. And I'm going to do a double crochet in every chain to the end of the row. So at the end of row one, we should have 20 double crochet stitches for the child size. Now we are going to start row two, which is a row that we're going to do over and over and over again as we create our poncho. Make sure that you are following along, like I said, with the size that you are making. So I've gone ahead and turned my work. For row two, we are going to slip stitch. So just insert your hook in that first stitch. Make sure that you don't pull it too tight and just do a slip stitch like so. I'm gonna slip stitch in each stitch across, and I'm going to make sure that I do not do these tight. It's going to be very difficult to get into these stitches on the next row if you make these too tight. So see how these are looking kind of loose? That is great. That is how they need to look, because I need to be able to get my hook back into those stitches when I come back through. 
Okay, I've just completed my last slip stitch of the row. I'm going to hold this a little bit so that it doesn't grow too much, and I'm going to chain two. I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into this first stitch of the next row, and this is going to be a double crochet. So now I'm going to turn my work. I just find that it's easier to find where to put my hook in if I do that before I turn. So I've done my one double crochet in the first. This is row three. For row three, we are going to do two double crochets in each slip stitch all the way across the row. So you can see there's these two V's looking at the top here. If you kind of turn it back, there's this V, and that is the slip stitch that you made. So you're going to want to crochet into the back two loops, right? The actual slip stitch that you did just a second ago. And I'm going to do two double crochets in each one of those, and that is for row three only. When you get to the end of row three, you should have doubled your stitch count. So I started with 20 double crochets for the child size. Since I did two stitches in each of the double crochets, or each in the slip stitches technically, I need to have 40 stitches for the child size after row three. So you've got this really nice curve, right? This is perfectly great. It looks exactly how it should be. Now we are ready for a number row two. Every single even numbered row of this entire pattern is going to be a row two, which is that slip stitch row. So we're going to pull the yarn, we're going to turn it to the left, makes the slip stitches look nicer, and we're going to make sure that we don't pull this first one in particular too tight. So I'm going to insert my hook, make sure I hold this down a little bit, slip stitch that, and I'm just going to slip stitch loosely across the entire row. And I should have 40 slip stitches for the child size at the end of this row. Now that we are at the end of row four, we are ready for row five. And now row five is going to be one that we do over and over and over and over again. So basically for the next so many rows, as it says in your pattern, you are going to chain two and ins go ahead and wrap your hook and insert it before you turn. It's just easier to find those two loops in my opinion. So now we are ready to start row five. We are going to do four double crochets in the first, then we're gonna double crochet in all of these across, and then we're gonna do four double crochets in the last one here as well. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, and four. I'm going to uh, do a double crochet in each of these slip stitches all the way to the other side. Now here on my last stitch, I'm going to do four double crochets in this final slip stitch right here. And that's why that one, which is the first slip stitch of each row, you want to make sure you're not doing those too tight because you got to fit four of those boogers in there. So make sure you've got enough space, right, to work with. So here we are at the end of one, two, three, four, five, and since we added three extra stitches on this end and three extra stitches on this end, every row for the next, until it says to stop, we're adding a total of six stitches to the count each time we do one of these double crochet rows. So now I'm going to do a row six, which since that is an even numbered row, is going to be one of those slip stitch rows. So I'm gonna slip stitch all the way across, when I get across, I'm going to turn and I'm going to do exactly what I just did on row five with row seven and then nine and then 11 and 13 and 15, etc., until the pattern tells you to stop for the size that you are making. So I'm going to continue with the poncho for the child's size and in the pattern it states that rows five through 34 for the child size, I'm just going to repeat these two rows over and over and over, continuing to grow it on each side so that it gets wider and wider and wider. When I get to the end of that row, of row 34, I'm going to hook back up with you and we will start the next portion of our poncho. This is really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. I think the hardest part is making sure that you get these slip stitches in to be nice and consistent in size and loose. So once you figure that out, the rest is a breeze. Here I am at the end. I'm going to chain two, insert my hook, wrap and insert just like this for a double crochet. Now I'm starting row seven, so I'm going to do four double crochets in that first stitch. 
and then one double crochet in each slip stitch all the way to the other side where I'm again going to do four double crochets in this final stitch over here. It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. It should be a very curved look right now and it will start to even out the farther out that you go. So when I get to the end of row 34, we're going to hook back up and start crocheting again together. I'll meet you there. So here is my last stitch of row 34 for the child size. I am now ready to start row 35. So I want to point out that at this point there is a difference between the child sizes and the adult sizes of this pattern. We have been doing four stitches in the front and end of each odd numbered row. Now the adult is going to switch to a more gradual um, and then the child is going to continue as I am here. So if you are making the adult size patterns, make sure that you follow along and read the pattern for how many uh, stitches you're supposed to be doing. Now when we get to this point we're going to start working in solid double crochet rows um, separated by the slip stitch rows. So for these, until it tells you to start the neck shaping, we're going to do our chain two. two. We're going to insert our hook here and we're going to turn and we're just going to do one double crochet in each stitch across each of these slip stitches. So no more increasing. We're going to one in the first, one in the last, separated by these slip stitch rows. Now for the child size that I am making here, I am this is row 35 and I'm going to do these solid double crochet rows separated by those slip stitch rows until I get to row 50. When I get to row 50, let me lay this out here so that we can see what we're working with. So here's what we have done so far. We've got a little, what will be a hand opening for the wrist. This is where we are coming up across the shoulder and then it's growing as we go down and this will be the bottom of the poncho right here. So right now, we're just going to add some extra width to the shoulder here. When I catch back up with you, when I get to row 50 of the child size, we're gonna start that neck shaping right here. So we will do that together on camera as well as the back portion and then we'll hook those back up. We will continue all the way across to the other cuff over here on the other side of the body. So I'm going to continue crocheting and I will hook up with you when we are ready to do that neck shaping again. So here we are at the end of row 50 of the child size. I am ready to start the neck shaping. So I'm going to chain two and turn like I normally do when I'm starting the double crochet rows. Do that first double crochet. And now I'm going to turn the entire poncho. So now we've got this flat portion here. So this is actually going to be the front bottom. So where it will be on the legs. We're going to double crochet in for this size. I'm going to do 61 double crochets. That's my 61st stitch. Make sure you're following along with the size of the poncho that you are making. Now the next thing that we are going to do is the first portion of the shaping itself. So we're going to double crochet three together. Roll, wrap your hook, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Do that in the second and the third. So this is a double crochet three together. So we've got one, two, three. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. And that is the end of row 51. So that's the first row of the neck hole shaping. So now I'm going to do my row two where I turn and I'm going to go all the way back with my slip stitches. Made it all the way back on row four or 52 for the child size. We're going to do a double crochet row again and we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did except we are going to double crochet in 59 stitches instead of the 61 because we did that decrease. So I'm going to do 59 double crochets and then we're going to do another of those double crochet three together. This is 58 and this is 59. Remember to follow along with the size that you are making. You should have three stitches left over from the previous row, right? So we're going to do our double crochet three together. One, two, and three. This one can be a little bit tricky to get into. I find that if I pull the slip stitch down a little bit, it's easier to go into right here, which is hard to see. Did that as best as I could, right? 
pull through two, and then we've got our three together, pull through all three of them, and that is the end of that row. So now we're going to turn and do a row two again, which is just our slip stitches. And the adult size of the pattern, there are two adult sizes. There's the one size and the larger size. The neck hole opening on both of those sizes is the same. And it does have an extra row of decreasing that we just did here. It has an extra row of that on the adult size. The child size neck hole does not need to be as big, obviously. So we do one fewer row there. So just follow along. Make sure that you are following the size that you are making. I'm going to continue going down. This is row 54 for me of the child size. So now 55, I did my chain two. I'm going to start that double crochet. And now this row, and the next several rows, it's just going to be solid double crochet rows. So we've done this neck shaping here, right? So this is your shoulder, the head's going to go right here. This is the neck shaping. Now we're just gonna do a few solid rows across, and then we're gonna make it go back up on this side. So I'm going to do several rows of the solid double crochets. When I'm ready to do the increasing here, we'll join back up on video, but make sure that you're just doing as number the number of rows required for the size that you are making. We'll hook back up when we're ready to get over here to this side. So here I am at the end of those solid double crochet slip stitch rows and I am ready to do the other side of the neck shaping for the child size. When you get to that point on the one that you are making, you're gonna go ahead and start this double crochet row like normal and double crochet all the way till you get to the end. Then we're going to place three double crochets in that last stitch. When you get to this last stitch, we're going to do the three double crochets right in that last stitch. And so let's take a look here, all situated. You can see that it's starting to take a shape to where it's going to go back up on this side. Then we're going to do the back, and the back is just going to be straight across. There's no increasing or decreasing on any of those rows, and we'll hook up together once we complete the back. So at the end of this row, we've got those three double crochets in that last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and do my slip stitch row all the way to the end, and then I'm going to place a stitch marker. All right, there is that last stitch of that last front shaping section, and you are going to end that on a slip stitch row. We're going to leave it here attached because we're going to use this yarn to attach it back together. So grab a different ball of yarn, right, and put this aside. Now we're going to look at where we left these stitches on the last row that we did before the neck shaping started, right? So whether you're doing whatever size it is that you are doing, skip as many stitches as it says in the pattern. So for all of the child sizes, it's two stitches that we're skipping and we're going to attach in the third, so right here. So we went into this stitch for the last of that double crochet three together, and we've got this stitch open and this stitch open. We're gonna attach in this stitch with the fresh ball of yarn. Just pull up a loop. I'm going to go ahead and chain two, and I'm gonna double crochet in that same slip stitch where I just attached it. And then I'm going to crochet in each double crochet in each of these slip stitches all the way to the end. So the back portion of the neck, so this is the front of the neck and this is going to be the back of the neck. We're just going to do those solid double crochet slip stitch rows and it should you should end on the same number as you had right here. And then we're gonna pick up on the other side down here and go all the way across and connect the two back together. So I'm going to continue crocheting the back of this child size, just back and forth and back and forth. When I get done up here, I will hook back up with you and we will connect it and we will continue on with the poncho itself. So I have just finished row 68 of the back for the child size, which is the final um, row of the back. So I am ready. I'm gonna leave this back yarn not fastening off. I'm just gonna leave it there for a little bit. And I'm going to find the stitch marker that we placed earlier when we finished the front. So I'm going to find this, remove the stitch marker, 
You might need to uh, pull this one out because that slip stitch could have gotten kind of tight, so I'm just going to make another one that's a little bit bigger. So this is where we left off on the front, right? So now where it says join the poncho body together, where we left off on row, six, for in this case, 68, we are going to chain two and turn. I'm going to go ahead and do that first double crochet. I'm going to pull this so that I can look at it from a different angle here. All right, now I am just going to double crochet in each slip stitch across the front. When you get to the final stitch of the front, we're going to do the remaining portion of the shaping. So we're going to place three double crochets in this last stitch, and that should make it mirror the other side, like what we did over here. So now we've got two decrease rows here, and we've got two increase rows here. Remember, that's different for the adult size, but the gist is the same. Now that we've done our three double crochets in the final stitch of the front, we should chain two for the child size. Adult is different. I'm going to chain two because we skipped two over here. So we're just making it a mirror image, right? So I did my chain two. Now I'm going to find the final stitch that I did on the back, that slip stitch right there, and I'm going to do a double crochet right in there. And notice that I have not fastened off that back yarn yet because we're going to use it here in a minute. So go ahead and complete that double crochet. That's kind of tricky, but you should have those three chain two or another size or another number if you're doing the adult size, and then double crochet in that first one, and then double crochet all the way to the end of the row. All right, so now we have joined the body back together, and we are just going to continue these solid double crochet rows. Remember when we had, let's position this differently. Remember when we were looking at it this way. Right? And we had, this is looking nice, isn't it? Very nice. Now we had so many rows that were solid double crochet with no increasing, no decreasing on this side. We're going to do the same exact thing on this side right here. So I am going to turn and do my slip stitch row to come back up the side. When I get to these chains right here, these two chains, I'm just going to slip stitch in those two chains as well. Okay, so I finished my slip stitch on the row that attached the two sides back together. So here we have our beautiful neck hole. Now in the pattern you will notice that I told you not to clip this yarn that was left over from the back portion. You can go ahead, for the sake of the video, I'm going to clip this today, but I'm going to do that leaving a very long tail from that yarn because we're going to use this yarn to single crochet around the neck opening so that we have something to which we can attach the hood. And so at the end of that, when you do your single crochet around this neck hole opening, you should have the same number of stitches as you do rows on the hood so that we can attach that evenly stitch for stitch. I'm just gonna clip my yarn for this purpose and just leave this hanging out. I will do this single crochet row with you when I get to that point point of attaching the hood, but for right now I'm just going to continue adding these double crochet rows so that it mirrors what we did on this side over here, right? So we're going to do this right here. When I get to that point where we start doing the shaping of the bottom, we will hook back up. So right now we're looking at the bottom here, and we've got all of these where we were doing all of these increases, where we were doing four double crochets, and then it goes across this flat portion here. We're going to continue the flat portion, and then we're going to start doing decreases so that it goes up on this side to mirror the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to continue crocheting these double crochet rows, and I will hook up with you when we are ready to start these decreases. So I've made it to the end of row 90 for the child size, and I am ready to start doing the decreases that will shape the other side of the poncho. So for that, I'm going to do my chain two. I'm going to do my wrap over the hook, go into that very first stitch, and then turn. I'm going to do a double crochet four together. So there's one. We're only pulling through those two loops. Yarn over, go into the next slip stitch. Pull up a loop and pull through two. Yarn over, go into the next. 
Yarn over, pull through two, and then do that one more time so that we have a double crochet four together. So here we've got our one, two, three, four. We're ready to yarn over and pull through all of those loops. Now I'm just going to double crochet all the way to the other side. When I get there, I'm going to do another double crochet four together on the opposite end so that it mirrors both sides. All right, I have made it back to where I only have four stitches left on this row. So I'm going to do my double crochet four together right here in these four stitches. I wanted to point out that if you are making the adult size, either of the adult sizes, this portion is going to be slightly different. So just make sure that you're following along with the rows and stitches as stated in the pattern. So now I've got all four of my double crochets ready to decrease. I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all of those. And now normally I would turn this way to start my slip stitches. I wanted to point out that I feel like when you are finishing this pattern, it looks better if the slip stitches are turned this way just for the decrease portion. For some reason it makes it lay a lot nicer. So I mean it doesn't have to be done this way, but it just looks a little bit better. So there's my first slip stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch all the way across and I'm going to repeat that decrease row until I get all the way back to where we only have those 18, 20 or so many stitches for the cuff which should be the same number that we started with at the very beginning of our poncho. So we're just going to make this side mirror what we did at the very beginning. At the end of row 120 of the child size, I should have 40 stitches left. Now this next row is going to do a lot of decreases so that we can get down to the cuff size as needed. So I've got my last stitch here. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook. And I'm going to double crochet two together the entire way. So I'm decreasing my stitch count by half this last one here. So I've gone from 40 stitches down to 20 stitches. Now we're ready to fold it over like this and this is going to be a cuff. I'm going to join to the first stitch here with a slip stitch just like this. Now we're ready to do our front post back post stitches. So for this first row we're going to chain two and we're not going to turn. We're going to wrap our hook and we're going to do double or a front post double crochet around the first decrease stitch here. I just go around the top. You could go around these posts here. Either way, does not matter. Front post double crochet, and then we're going to do a back post double crochet around the next one. And we're going to alternate those all the way around. This last one, I'm going to sneak in an extra front post around this one right here. You could even go around the chain of the beginning. We want to start this row with a front post double crochet and end this, po this row with a front post because the way that we join makes it look very seamless. So I'm going to join to the top of this first front post right here. And now I'm going to chain two and turn. And looking at the back side, or at the inside, I'm going to do a back post around this one which was a front post of the last row, so that they're always lining up. So I'm just going to do a front post and a back post. And a front post and a back post all the way around. If you need a dedicated tutorial for the front post and back post um, stitches, I do have that available as well on the YouTube channel. We're going to end this row with a back post since we started with a back post and we're going to join to the top of the first stitch here. Now we're going to do our chain two, turn, and we're going to do that same exact thing. Up, and We're going to do this through row eight. This is row three that we are starting. So I'm going to do this several more times and then we'll finish off this cuff. We'll do the other cuff. We will prepare the neck hole opening with those single crochets where we left that super long tail, yarn tail from earlier. And then we are going to make the hood and we will be completely finished. So when you get to the end of row eight, you're going to chain one and turn. And for the nine, we're just going to do a single crochet in each stitch around. And then we're going to fasten off with the invisible join. 
I will go ahead and finish this cuff and I will do the other one and then we will do the hood. So here we've got both of our cuffs finished. I'm ready to weave in all of these yarn ends throughout the entire poncho, but this is looking great. So it's shaped, it's got our nice little neck opening here. We'll add the single crochet to that here in a moment. We're gonna go ahead and start the hood so that we can get that going. So the hood pattern is slightly different for all of the sizes, but the concept is the same. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a chain of however many is stated for the size that you are making for the child size. My chain is going to be 34. So I've got my 34. I'm going to find the third chain from my hook and in the back bar I'm going to do my double crochet. I'm going to double crochet in each chain all the way to the end and then I'm going to place three double crochets in the last chain and then I'm going to work my way up the other side. So I'm just going to keep on double crocheting until I get to the end of this chain. When I get to this very last chain I am going to do three double crochets in this last one right here. Alright, so there's my three double crochets in the last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and continue making double crochets on the back side of this chain all the way down. So I'm going to go in the next stitch here and then in this one here, here, here. This is going to be the back center of the hood and we're just going to build on this way in rounds um, as big as it's stated for the size that you are making. When I get back to the first double crochet I made I have completed row one and so this is going to be the hood this is the very center and we're just going to build going back and forth so I'm going to turn I'm going to do my slip stitches like we have been the entire time Now we're at the end of row two, I'm going to do my chain two, I'm going to do my double crochets starting row three and I'm just going into those slip stitches like we have been the entire time we've been making the poncho. The only difference is that during the rows where we're building the height of the hood, which is what we're doing right now, for the centermost stitch, there are stitch counts listed, but all we're really doing is we're finding the centermost stitch at the peak of the hood here. So you can kind of pull it open if you need to, but you can see that there's three double crochets right at the top. So every row for however many rows it says for the size that you are making, you're going to place three double crochets in that centermost stitch and it's going to continue building and building like this when we get to the point where we're not going to build it anymore. We're just going to do solid double crochet rows. Then we'll build higher width to the hood instead of height, if that makes sense. So continue crocheting, adding these stitches, adding the width to the hood until it tells you to stop. And we will attach this hood together here shortly. All right, so now that I've got this hood completed, you can see that this is where we started and we just continued growing it on the back here until we stopped putting those three stitches in. You can see where that starts going into solid rows instead. So this is a beautifully constructed hood. We are ready to do the assembly on this. So where we have this uh, left off on our yarn. We do not fasten off. Instead, we're going to look at it across the bottom of the hood here and we're just going to single crochet across the entire bottom. So the number of single crochets that you have should be the width of your hood, right? So I've done a chain one and I'm just going to single crochet in each row end across. So I'm going to place one here and then one in the base of those double crochets, and then one here, oops, and then in the base of those double crochets, and then here, and the base of those double crochets all the way across. And you should end up, for the child size, you should end up with 56 stitches. All right, at this last one, I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first stitch of that actual hood row there. I'm going to leave a decently long tail because I'm going to need this to sew the hood to the poncho. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way on through, this yarn, maybe. 
Okay, so now that is ready to attach to the opening of the poncho body. So we're gonna set this aside. We're going to go back to where we were when we finished off and we had joined our pieces back together. Do you remember? We had that yarn tail. Let's move everything out of the way and get positioned here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet around, I don't know what this yarn tail is coming from, but it's not, it's not there. We're going to single crochet around this opening and we're going to make sure that the number of single crochets that we have here matches what we just did on the bottom of the hood so that we, when we sew it on, it's just stitch for stitch and stitch for stitch. It just makes it go on a lot easier. So what I'm going to do, and you can do this portion as soon as you finish this row right here you can go back and do this so that you don't have this yarn tail hanging out the entire time. Totally up to you. I just left a super, 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 super duper long tail like this. It was very long, just in case. And then if I figured if I need to, I can use this also to attach the hood or use the remnants to create a few strands of fringe when I'm ready for that. So I've got this where it's attached here. This is where we fastened off on the back. I'm just going to go into the side of this, just kind of like right here, right? And I'm just going to pick up a loop just like this so that I'm ready to crochet with it. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm just going to single crochet evenly around the entire neck hole opening. You might need to, or what I find helpful, so I say that I have 56 stitches needed, right, for the child size. I'm going to say, okay, 56, half of that, so by the time I get to the opposite end over here, I need to be about halfway through my stitches, right, to make them evenly placed. So just fit them in and count as you go. You could place a stitch marker in this first one here um, to make it easier to count as you're going along. I'm just going to crochet evenly around, as evenly as I can, putting the 56 stitches. All right, I have made my way all the way back around. I'm going to join to the top of the first single crochet and I'm just going to pull it all the way through. And I actually didn't do too bad with the amount of yarn that I left myself. It's a little bit long, but not too terrible actually, right? So now I've gotten this neck hole and I've done my single crochets all the way around, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And if you choose not to put a hood on, that is perfectly fine. You do not have to put a hood on at all. But if you are going to attach it now, what we're going to do is we are going to, and if you have a mannequin that you can put this on the mannequin's shoulders and just put the hood over the top of the mannequin head, um, that is, works out really well. And that's actually how I've done all of mine so far. But for video purposes, we're just going to line it up like this, right? You're gonna find the center of your hood, which this is the first row that we did right here. This is our chain. We're gonna line that up with the back of the poncho opening. Now you can either use stitch markers or, <clears throat> or however you wanna do it to attach it um, and just pin it into place, but you should, if you find the exact center of the hood and line it up to the exact center of the neck opening, you should be able to sew it since you have the same number here of stitches as you have here, you should just be able to do stitch for stitch all the way, and then when you get to the front, the two front pieces of the hood here should meet in the exact center of the hood in the front, right, in the opening of the poncho. So before you actually sew, start sewing all your way around, I would definitely get stitch markers and put your stitch markers together here, find the center here, and then just kind of lay it around and make sure that everything is perfectly lined up before you do actually start sewing. So I've got this here. And go ahead, I'm gonna use my yarn tails. I always like to use my yarn tails. Let me grab a couple stitch markers. My stitch markers handy. So I'm going to, since this is actually over here on the side, I'm going to find the middle, which looks like it's, let's see, right here. Looks like the middle of the back. So we're gonna pin this to the center of the hood, just like this, right? So now, I should be able to count if I don't want to pin the whole thing, which I do recommend it, but for purposes today, I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing. But I'm going to find 
where I've got this one goes to that one. This one, that one, 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 this one, that one. This one goes with this one, it looks like, right? So that we can make sure that we're sewing this on appropriately. So I'm going to check this one more time because this does help to make sure that the front is going to line up as well. So this looks like it's perfectly lined up. So now I'm just going to take this hood and I'm just going to go back and forth. Let me move up a little bit. I'm just going to go back and forth these stitches, just kind of like you're lacing a shoe. There we go. And that's it. We're just going to do this all the way around. When you get to the front of the hood, like I said, um, the two pieces of the hood should touch in the front. I suppose they don't have to if you don't need them to or if you don't want them to, but they should since the number of stitches matches. So I'm just going to keep on sewing on this hood just like this. Now that we've figured out where the center is and that we are on pace to hit the center perfectly. Okay. Make sure we're pulling this nice, nice, nice. Let's keep on keeping on. When I'm finished sewing on this hood, uh, we are going to add the fringe to it. And I do want to mention, is de especially depending on the yarn that you used, I've noticed that these ponchos, they, they are, can be a little bit stiff right when you're finished with them, but I've thrown them in the washer, and usually after two, maybe even three times of washing it, those stitches really settle into each other and they start feeling a lot more relaxed and a lot more comfortable. So that's something to be mindful of. If you feel like your poncho is just a little bit too stiff or it's not laying very nicely, the drape isn't there, wash it a few times and make sure you're using fabric softener, throw some tennis balls in there, throw, I mean, all kinds of things. You can use those wool dryer balls. Some people take aluminum foil and uh, crunch it up and put it in there as well. So those are just things that you can do to help soften your crochet a little bit. I hope you enjoyed crocheting the Lori Poncha with me today and I look forward to crocheting with you again soon.